I fully anticipate witnessing more opinion pieces like this the closer we get to the premiere of Rings of Power in early September from alleged Tolkien fans. Hello, this is Mara Jade and I'm back with another video and I use the term alleged when it comes to Tolkien fans in particular this case because any fan claiming to be in love with any property, whatever that property may be, but yet uses words like but, however, what if, and so forth, followed inevitably by some modern day social or political stance and belief that does not belong at all within said property, were never fans to begin with, in my opinion. They were not, am not, and will never fucking be. And yet, we have opinion pieces cropping up like this. Now, like I said, I fully anticipate witnessing more of these as well as the preparation of ad hominem attacks against anyone who dares to criticize this show. Picanism, sexism, racism, picanist, whatever, misogynist, transphobic, homophobic, pick one. They ha I'm betting they had those attacks prepared for anyone who dares at all, even remotely lob any sort of constructive criticism the way towards this show. But at any rate, I'm going to just dive right into this opinion piece. I'm going to try to limit uh, my two cents takes throughout because it is a gem of an article. And I really don't want you guys to have to suffer too long with this <laughs> god-awful take. But without further ado, let's just dive right into this, shall we? Watching Molten Metal Poured to Reveal Rings of Power, the title of the long-awaited Tolkien-centric Amazon TV series first lie right there, or at the very least, first falsehood. It's not Tolkien-centric because it's in name only. They don't have the rights to the genuine histories of the Second Age, but my little nerdy heart skipped a beat. This was truly happening. I have watched TikTok videos, fucking TikTok, and read articles dissecting every detail attempting to anticipate the plots and characters of rings with no story to directly recreate. Like I said, they don't have the rights to the genuine histories of Middle-earth, namely the Silmarillion, Unfinished Tales, and History of Middle-earth that would have helped them f flesh out pretty much every season for this series that they wanted to reflect. They don't have the rights to. They only have the rights to the appendices, so they are filling in with their own characters, their own non-canonical takes. They wanted to tell the story Tolkien never wrote in the showrunner's words. As well as the, an executive producer, I believe, if I remember the title correctly, who also stated that person wanted Middle-earth in this series to reflect the world we live in today. Not Middle-earth as it is, how Tolkien wrote it, how he laid the foundation no, at, to reflect our modern world. These are the people putting this series out. Unlike the Lord of the Rings movies and The Hobbit, the world of Middle-earth is open to the Rings creatives. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But, moving on. Some might consider this unnerving, yes. Because like I said it in my last video, from minute one, any fan, anyone claiming to love Tolkien, worth his or her weight, in that admiration for the author, should have said, I can't do this series justice. You're, you're tying my hands with me not having access to what works I would use to flesh out the second age of Middle-earth. I can't do anything. But whether it's greed, narcissism, what have you, or a, co or a deadly combination of both, the showrunners just went with it and decided they were going to put their, their spin their interpretation on this series, not Tolkien's. Wary of how adaptations can take liberties with beloved source material, I am optimistic. Oh, do fucking tell. The release of the promo featuring black actress Sophie Nomvet as dwarf princess Disa suggests the creators are keen to diversify Tolkien's world. Red fucking flag, like I said, alleged Tolkien fan. Original female characters are said to be included too. With these steps to pull Tolkien's world work into the modern world, Tolkien's work is timeless. It can already be pulled, 
pulled into the modern world because the messages within the source, within the lore, within the world building itself are timeless. They're universal. As a gay Tolkien nerd, I have to ask, how gay will it be? If you're basing it off of, again, the superficial qualities of skin color, sex, as in biological sex, and sexuality, again, you were never a fan to begin with. You were a fan of what you could read into the text. And what does the fuck, you being gay, have any fucking thing to do with this? Really, I don't give a fucking flying fuck if you're gay or not. But what does your sexuality at all have anything to do with your love of a work? It shouldn't. It really fucking shouldn't. Because if you can't empathize with any fucking character, no matter their skin color, no matter their sex, no matter their sexuality, then you're skin deep. You are literally skin deep. You are that fucking shallow. Already I can prophesize what certain Tolkien fans might say, but there aren't any gays in Middle-earth. There's no need for sexuality. How far they would be from the point. There's a difference between love, romance, and sexuality. Alright? There's a big fucking difference. So yes, there is no sexuality in Middle-earth. Firstly, Tolkien is a bastion of the fantasy genre, both in following and subverting fantastical tropes. At its bare bones, the fantasy genre requires its audience to suspend their disbelief and be submerged into a world that bears no semblance to their own. Yes. So why, why, why are you saying it's further from the point when you're cl when people claim there's no sexuality in Middle Earth? Because it doesn't reflect what you claim down here. It's no no semblance to. The world we live in. Our own world. Tolkien, Jackson, et al. Ask you to believe in elves, wizards, and giant spiders. Indeed, believing the two hobbits could fall in love isn't a leap from those same hobbits destroying a magic ring. If he didn't write it as so, then yes, we're not going to believe it. Like it or not, dude. A lot of what inspired Tolkien's world building, a lot of what inspired the themes within his works was his faith. He was devoutly Catholic. So guess fucking what, asshole? Alright? He didn't write it. There's no way for you to interpret it. So therefore, there's no way to say that, indeed, believing this, you should be able to believe this. If he didn't write it, if he didn't establish it, then fuck off. Attempting to divorce sexuality from the fantasy genre is an impossible task. Tolkien did it. He did it. How is it impossible for you when the author you claim to be a fucking fan of did it? Easily. Our longest surviving examples of fantasy fairy tales are built on foundations of heterosexuality. The prince marries the princess, the knight rescues the maiden. Tolkien is rife with couples and marriages. Not how you're interpreting it. All right, because Tolkien did not emphasize, he did not at all, at all emphasize any of their sexualities. So yes, the characters are straight, but that did not define their characters at all. That was an aspect to their characters, but the fact that you are so, so honed in on that one aspect that for some reason you cannot love any property, in this case, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, and so forth, without interpreting what you want to interpret in it, namely, sexuality, it's just mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. They were characters. They were characters. They had flaws. They had strengths. Different personalities. But you're zeroing in like a fucking mosquito, like the little fucking bloodsucker you are, on just one tiny aspect, because you can't see past your own sexuality. Though a tangent from the primary quest narrative, you have the Aragorn, Arwen, Eowyn, Love Triangle, which really, from what I can recall, really not in the book, it was more so in the movies, but whatever, really wasn't a love triangle necessarily, 
and the marriage of Sam and Rosie, and in the Hobbit films, there's the ill-fated but well-meaning romance between Killy and Tariel. Tariel, a non-canonical character, one I have my own fucking issues with, and three, would have never happened. But then again, you're a Tolkien fan, you should know this, right? If what these bemoaning Tolkienites mean is sex, then I don't think they need fear. No. Again, there's a difference. Alright? You're zeroing in, you're honing in, on sexual desires, which do not belong here, because Tolkien, right, wasn't a factor in his world building. Showrunner Patrick McKay has promised that Rings will not be the new Game of Thrones with surplus blood and bodily fluids, but to equate sexuality solely with sex is reductive and shouldn't be preclude the inclusion of non-straight sexualities. When the pictures of Disa were released, racially motivated opinions were voiced. The general gist was that there wouldn't be any black dwarves. The reasoning, Tolkien's dwarves were inspired by the dwarves of Norse mythology, and all the Scandinavians are white. Not only is this argument thin, like butter spread over too much bread. Oh, you're so being so fucking creative. It wouldn't be impossible for a similar argument to be made to exclude queer people. Okay, the... Alright, back the fuck up. Alright? First off, the problem, the reason they, ha they had a problem with her skin color in this case is because she is a dwarf in Moria, all right? There were dwarves, different skin tones, but they weren't in Moria, okay? They weren't in Moria. That's the problem we had. Secondly, the first critique I ever saw anybody lob at those pictures was the fact that she's supposed to be a dwarf and she has no fucking beard. Oh, but again, you're the Tolkien fan. If you think Norse mythology is filled with only straight cis figures, then I suggest you pick up a book. God Loki shapeshifts into a woman, even laying with a stallion. Odin is mocked for practicing sidir, or woman's magic. Norse mythology has an inherent queerness. The idea that Tolkien's universe would lack queer people because of its relationship to Norse mythology does not stand. Now, I don't know who's making exactly that argument, so to speak. However, I'm just saying that it would lack queer people because he never fucking wrote them as such. And whatever inspiration from Norse mythology is based in kind of character descriptions, like how Gandalf is described. If you look at how Gandalf is, is described within The Hobbit's and Lord of the Rings. Look at how Odin is described. He's often depicted as an old man wearing a, a cloak and a cap similar to how Gandalf is portrayed. Not He's not so much deriving mythological takes, mythological stories necessarily, but you can definitely see a little bit of the inspiration. But you're using it as a way to prove your own narrative, your own worldview, your own spin on an already established world. Within the canon of Middle-earth, there are opportunities where reading queerness could set a precedence for canon queerness. There's the key words there. Reading queerness. Meaning, again, you are reading into it what you want to see, not what's actually there. And I, again, I fully anticipate more articles, more opinion pieces like this to crop up with the preparation of ad hominem attacks, lobbing, sexism, racism claims at people criticizing any aspect of this show or anything to do with trying to interpret, warp, alter, bastardize Tolkien's works. Like this. Plenty has been written on the queerness of Sam and Frodo's relationship. Their devotion and their in intimacy are all touching inferences of queerness. No, it's touching inferences of brotherhood, love, lo brotherly love, friendship, love. Not queerness. They were never romantically attracted to each other. Sam had only eyes for Rosie. That's it. Nothing romantic was between them. Nothing. Whatever love existed between them was brotherly, friendship, based on loyalty, respect, and so forth. So fuck you. On more than one occasion, the hobbits kiss each other. Sam took his master's hands and kissed them. It's a sign of deference. Alright? 
is a sign of deference, not romance. Remember seeing pictures of people kissing the rings on kings or queens' hands? It's just, that's a sign of deference. Even fucking kissing the rings off mafiosa's hands. Sign of deference, not romance, not sexuality. At other times, embarking as a duo, they fall asleep together. In Sam's lap lay Frodo's head. Alright. Again, you're reading into it what you want to see. What you want to be there. Not what actually is. What might further this reading is Sam and Frodo's ending parallel to another queered couple. Fucking hell. Fuck this author. Sam eventually joins Frodo in the Undying Lance. Joining a male companion effectively in death parallels mythic warrior Achilles and his companion lover Patroclus, made famous by Madeline Miller's novel Song of Achilles. After Patroclus' death, Achilles insists that he's buried with him. Alright? Okay, first off, Sam joins Frodo. Sam joins Frodo because... Sam was a ring bearer, and at one point, I mean, Frodo was a ring bearer, and at one point, Sam held the ring, the one ring. All right, and both were part of the fellowship created to transport the one ring of power to Mordor to destroy it. That's why Sam, he didn't just join Frodo to the Undying Lands, he was allowed to travel with Frodo to the Undying Lands. So it wasn't Frodo's request, all right? It was Sam being given that gift, that permission to go with Frodo. Nothing to do at all with anything Frodo wanted. The interred mingling of bodies, the love and devotion implied in Miller's novel, could be mapped into onto Sam and Frodo's relationship. You're you're doing it yourself. It is not fucking there. It's important to remember that Middle-earth is populated by more than just humans. No shit, Sherlock. And these beings have proved cultural and social differences to men. Is it a leap to believe these differences could include sexuality? I cannot beat this dead horse enough. If it's not already established, if it's not there, there's nothing to interpret. There's nothing for you to claim there should be no leap to... <laughs> To your own warped interpretation. In the two towers, Gimli jokes with Eowyn about the appearance of dwarf women, that they too have beards. Dwarf women present a challenge to human ideas of women. It's how dwarf it's how dwarf women look, simply. It's how dwarf women look, which is why humans believe that there were only male dwarves, because they rarely ever saw a female dwarf out there. They had beards, and whenever they traveled, they dressed similarly to their male counterparts. It's that fucking simple. It wasn't to challenge human ideas of women. This exemplifies how Middle Earth's inhabitants do not share all social norms, including gender norms. I got news for you. I got news for you. Women... Even modern day women, some group have distinct facial hair. I'm not talking about like trans or anything like that. I'm talking about biological women, depending on where they are, like regioning wise, you can see facial hair on them. It's a human characteristic. It's a human characteristic. Now, we don't exactly grow it much like men do, but again, it's not social norms. It's not. It's not, it's not including gender norms or anything like that. No, it's just how dwarf he described dwarf women as looking. They had beards. Similar to the males. The concept of bearded dwarf women could lend itself to all kinds of queer interpretations. Again, using that term, interpretations, meaning you're reading into it what you want to see, not what's actually there. Such as a trans or gender fluid reading of dwarf women. Fucking Christ almighty. In a similar vein, elves do not share all the same cultural concepts as men. In the Fellowship book, Galadriel bestows gifts upon the Fellowship. This is what your folk would call magic, though I do not understand clearly what they mean. Some could argue that this is a matter of semantics, but magic is a man-made idea, unknown and seemingly untranslatable. Matter of semantics. You literally answered your own fucking question right there. I have read about the mountainside scene after Gandalf Falls. You're talking about when he falls after the Balrog? Is that what you're, that's what you mean? 
Orlando Bloom's performance appears confused. This confusion is not centered on Gandalf, but rather its effect. Elves, as immortal beings, are unfamiliar with the finality of death. In Tolkien's words, death is the gift of men. Death and its finality, a foundational concept for men, is an idea not shared with elves, where other man-made concepts might not be shared. He's also hurt. He's also pained. He just witnessed one of the Fellowship die. The one of the Fellowship, Gandalf, who was effectively leading the group. Who sacrificed himself so they could get away. So what does this have anything to fucking do with what you're writing in this opinion piece? Perhaps within Elvish culture, they don't recognize sexual preference as an identity. Jesus. Well, fucking Christ. They perhaps don't have words akin to gay or lesbian or homophobia. They... Mm. While there are examples of heterosexual elven marriages, in the unnarrated background of Rivendell or Lothlorien, there could be same-sex elvish couples. They're coupling distinct from the sexuality norms of men. Again... You are wanting this. Not it's not there. Uh, like it or not, dude. Like I said, Tolkien's a lot of the inspiration within the world building of Middle Earth and the themes uh, surrounding it is based on his faith, and he was devoutly Catholic. So it's not there. Returning, reading queerly. Taking canon and viewing it through a queer lens, I, I've, okay, I'm going to be an English teacher uh, near future, like near future down the road, and I generally, I don't want to say despise, but I avoid reading anything through any necessarily lens like this. Polit like historical lenses, biographical lenses, Yes, because like those are dealing with the historical times and the author itself. But anything personally, like the feminist lens or the queer lens, no. If the author didn't establish anything to be read as such, then it's not, it, it's non-existent. Tolkien includes tropes that can be interpreted or would have significance for a queer audience. Tolkien blends his strands of high fantasy with romantic tropes such as the forbidden romance. The examples are usually between elves and men. Working on the basis that certain relationships are deemed clandestine, same-sex relationships have historically been viewed similarly. If we were to change Arwen to a man, potentially the trope of the forbidden romance would remain unchanged, maybe even heightened by the same-sex factor. I, 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 I'm so sorry for those people who are reading this with me while watching my video. Throughout the trilogy, the relationship between Legolas and Gimli can be treated as an overcoming of the historical animosity between elves and dwarves. Yes. No more me no more need to be said. Move on. But no, you don't, because you say, as they become companions, this animosity clashes with their growing friendship. Yes. It was not the fault of the dwarves, said Gimli. I have not heard it was the fault of the elves, said Legolas. It was overcoming that historical animosity. That's what made it significant. When it occurred throughout the Lord of the Rings. By the end and the iconic exchange between them, never thought I'd die fighting side by side with an elf. What about side by side with a friend? Their relationship is cemented and they have overcome the inherited hatred from their respective cultures. Yes, no more me, no more me be said. Move on. But no, you don't. The elf dwarf relationship storyline would be well suited to a same sex relationship. The internal struggle, pressures from outside forces, and eventual acceptance. If you are interested in the further readings, you'll find that Legolas and Gimli also travel to the Undying Lands together akin to Frodo and Sam and paralleling Achilles and Patroclus. Again, Gimli, much like Sam, is given that right. He's given that right to travel to the Undying Lands. No one can just hop on a boat and travel there. Alright? You have to be bestowed that privilege to do so. And one reason for... Gimli is because he was part of the fellowship. He was part of the fellowship that again carried the one ring of power, the one ring of power from Rivendale to Mordor. Now, yes, he did not necessarily make it to Mordor with Frodo and Sam, but he made it to Mordor. He fought Sauron's forces alongside what, who became his friend Legolas, as well as Aragorn and Gandalf, Merry and Pippin. Part of the fellowship. That's why he was given, granted that privilege. Nothing at all to interpret other than that. 
Like the dwarves in Erebor, I like to think I have unearthed and polished precious precedents for queer representation in Tolkien-inspired works. Representation that will hopefully be reflected in Rings of Power. Yes, Tolkien might not have written queerness. You go through all this fucking shit and even say right here, Tolkien might not have written queerness. He didn't. Not might. Didn't. But that doesn't mean it can't be found, interpreted, or explicitly included now. These are the alleged fans we have to be wary of. I asked Don Marshall, Tolkien extraordinaire and TikTok creator, for his thoughts. One of the great things about Tolkien's Middle Earth is that each new adaptation beyond the books brings something exciting to invite new fans into the community. Tolkien may have created the universe, but the community has kept it alive all these years later. There's a difference between keeping it alive as it was created versus keeping it alive as how you want it to be portrayed. With the prospect of queer inclusion, maybe it'll attract people who have not seen themselves in Tolkien before. Again, if you cannot empathize with any character beyond that of skin color, biological sex, or sexuality, then you are shallow, you were never a fan, and it's not going to attract you at all. If you had, if you couldn't see yourself in anyone beyond those superficial qualities, then you're that shallow, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, if you need to see queerness within a work that shouldn't belong, you were never a fan to begin with and are not a fan and will never be a fan. If you can't love it, accept it how it is. You might not like everything, but necessarily, but you don't want to change it. That's the difference. I'm counting down to rings and who knows, maybe we'll see our first Hobbit on Hobbit kiss. Well, there it is, folks. I apologize if this was a long one, but this article, or opinion piece, I should say, really deserved a rant. Because, like I said, I fully anticipate seeing more like this pop up in the future, as well as the preparation of articles pro possibly going toxic fandom, uh, racist fans, sexist fans, and so forth. Anyone who ever has any remote constructive criticism lobbed against a series, especially a series that is bastardizing, bastardizing, established lore, uh, telling their own story and uh, slapping on uh, Lord of the Rings to it, things like that. But in any case, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Do you agree with this author? Do you disagree with him? What are your thoughts on the now soon to be premiering in early September Rings of Power? Again, are you going to watch it? Not watch it? What are your thoughts on what the showrunners have been doing so far? Anything they've said. All that fun stuff. I'll be live later tonight on Twitch. Depending on the availability of someone. I might just stream some more Destiny 2. Um, because I normally would be streaming Naraka. Uh, if the person is unavailable. But I'd rather play that offline. At least until I level up enough. So I can solo Battle Royale mode. And not just fight against bots. So I'm going to try to do that within the next coming week. So that way by next Thursday. I will be leveled up enough that I can go actually into a battle royale situation within that game. So that's my plan for tonight. Jade underscore fire around 7.30 p.m. Eastern. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Share on social media if you will. This is Mara Jade. Catch you on the dark side. And how K could it be? Fucking hell no.